Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be starting a new series which is ESC debugging. We're going to see the components and how to test the components on the ESC and see if they're bad or not. And um, this video we're going to be covering the MOSFETs which, are, which is what usually tends to get ruined first or break on a ESC and later on we're going to show you, I'm going to be showing you how to replace them. So um, a couple things to take note of. For example, let's just say you're, you boot up your quad and your motor is doing this or just spinning very slowly and then all of a sudden it reboots and reinitializes most likely 90% of the chance it is a bad MOSFET now before going into this step just take a look at your ESC make sure there's no physical damage nothing missing no capacitors that popped off or you know any burnt capacitors or anything that seems like it's melted so that's the first step you want to take the second step is where we're going to actually test the MOSFETs themselves you really don't have to power up the quad or desolder anything which is what's so cool about this and I'm going to quickly show you how to test this stuff and it's very simple. Now another reason why your motor could also possibly be doing this is that maybe one of your motor wires got ripped out and it has a weak connection so thus you know not giving it the full electricity correctly and it just keeps breaking every now and then. For example like if you break your uh, laptop's charger and you plug it in you have to keep moving it to get the electricity to pass through to charge your battery. It's kind of the same concept so uh, this in this test we, we already know that the ESC is bad and we're going to actually test the MOSFETs and see how does a good MOSFET look like with a bad MOSFET. So this is the bad one, this is the good one. So before we begin, let's talk about MOSFETs and let's get started. Alright guys, so there's two types of MOSFETs. You have an N channel and you have a P channel. Let's first talk about the N channel. So we're going to go ahead and draw a MOSFET. Usually they're square. Now each MOSFET has three types of pins. We have a gate pin. So let's put that here, a gate, a source, and a drain. All right, so usually you have one gate pin, so one pin, source sometimes three to four, and then drain sometimes three to four, depending. So it could be, if this is a three, this would be four pins. If this was a four pin, this would be a three pin. So it's vice versa, because you only have eight pins on this. So let's go ahead and draw these. So for example, here we have one source pin, and here we have our, sorry that's a gate, and this is our source. And then we're going to draw our drain, one, two, three, four. So we have four pins in total here. And what we're going to do, is this is actually very simple to understand here, so I'm going to go ahead and mark these so you don't get lost. All right. So we have gate, which is that one, and I have this very bad color choice. It's this one, this is the gate, and this is the drain. Now, when a MOSFET goes bad, there's this gate here. And this gate um, is what allows these guys, these guys are all connected together, to pass through to these guys right here. So we'll just do it like this. So this is the gate, the gate. And if this gate goes bad, this will stay open and allow electricity to pass through the other side without stopping it. And you need the stopping motion because the ESC creates an AC current, which is positive, negative, positive, negative, and it does this kind of waveform thingy. So if a MOSFET's bad, it'll have continuity between the source and the drain. Now, if you're going to test continuity, you have to make sure you know which is the positive and which is the negative. Now right now this is, we're going to pretend this is an N channel MOSFET. Okay, so N. Think of it as neutral, natural, and let me explain why. Natural. So what I like to do is to remember which one's positive and which one's negative, I would go to the second letter. So if the second letter is O, that doesn't really make any sense to me, but here the second letter is R, which is red. So this is actually the positive on the N channel, which is natural. So the second letter is red, which is positive. So the source would be the negative, as you can see here. And this is a gate, we'll just make it like a, I don't know, so you don't get lost. All right, so right now we would test, if we wanted to test this MOSFET, if it was bad or not, we would actually touch our negative probe to the source, which is these guys. And with the positive probe, the red probe, which is drain R for red, you would touch the other side. And if you get continuity, then this is a bad MOSFET. That simple. Now, P-channel MOSFET works the same 
exact thing. Now think of P channel. Unfortunately, the, the lettering is crap. P channel is take the second letter of the word opposite. Okay, so it's opposite. So it works the opposite way. So in a P channel, the source would be the positive and the drain would be the negative. And it's just that simple. Hopefully I explained it pretty good. And uh, we're gonna actually see how this works and how we're gonna test this right now. So let's take an example here. So we already kind of know which ones, is, what are the sources and what are drains on an N channel MOSFET. Let's take a look at the data sheet. There we go. So as you can see here, this is the data sheet of the MOSFET that we're gonna be looking at, which is on the Diatone ESC, which I've burnt recently. And as you can see, we have pins one, two, and three are the source, and this is what kind of MOSFET. This is an N-channel MOSFET, so it's a natural MOSFET. So we would take the second letter, which is a R, so this would be red, which means the drain is the positive here. So pins five, six, seven, eight are positive. Pins one, two, three are source, which would be negative. And this is the gate, four. As you can see here, it's kind of the same thing that we just drew earlier. So four is the gate, and yeah, these are the source and these are the drain. So if it's a bad MOSFET, then we would have, if we touch pin number one with the negative probe with the multimeter, and we touch the positive probe with with any of these, if we do get continuity, then we have a bad MOSFET on our hands. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, guys, so let's begin testing. Now, we know this is the bad ESC, and this is a good ESC. So let's go ahead and start with this ESC. Now, I know all of my MOSFETs are burned. I didn't have them all burned. I had two that were still good, but I just burnt the last two trying to do something with it. All right, so let's go ahead and grab our multimeter. That's the first obvious step we have to make and go into continuity mode, which is the beep mode. And if you touch these two together, they beep. All right, so... Before we begin, actually, let's go ahead and take a look. And I found the data sheet for this, and usually you can find a data sheet by checking the number here and uh, writing that number into Google and adding, you know, MOSFET data sheet or just data sheet after the number, and you're most likely going to find the data sheet for it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data sheet here together so we can figure out which are the, the drain and the source because those are the main two that we want, and if it's an N channel or a P channel type MOSFET. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. All right. So, as in the beginning, we see that it's an N-channel MOSFET. Okay, so we have to go natural. So natural is we go by the second letter, which is R, red, so this would be positive. So the drain is the positive probe here, and whatever is the source, is, whatever is the other thing is going to be the negative. So 1, 2, and 3 are going to be the negative parts. So these guys right here, 1, 2, 3, by the circle. And the drain, which is the positive, is going to be 5, 6, 7, 8 which are those top ones right here. So if we have continuity between one and um, any of the top ones, then we know it's a bad MOSFET. We don't want to touch the gate. Make sure you don't touch the gate. So let's go ahead and check this out. So we said by the circle is our source, so that's where our negative probe is going to go on any of these three. And on the drain, which is on the complete other side, is going to be the uh, drain, which is the positive. So the positive probe is going to go up top. So let's go ahead and start doing this. All right, so let's take a look here. So here's the circle, and below the circle is the source. So the source is the negative, so let's go ahead and do that. And the top ones should be the drain now. Now, usually they're all connected together, so if I just touch one. Okay, so this is obviously a bad MOSFET because it's beeping. If it was a good one, there would be no beep. And if you, you could touch any of them, they're all beep because these are all connected together, and those three right here are connected together. So this is a bad MOSFET here. So let's go ahead and test this one. So we're going to go ahead and touch one. It doesn't matter any of the source you can touch and any of the drains you can touch. If you get continuity, then it's a bad MOSFET. So this is another bad MOSFET. Here we'll do another one. So we're even going to test, touch the third pin here. And then we're going to go here. See, this is a bad MOSFET. All of these are bad MOSFETs on this ESC. I've already tested them. So let's go ahead and check a good MOSFET. Let's go ahead and check a good ESC here. All right, so let's just kind of do that there. All right, so we know the source is the negative, which is the one by the circle. And let's see here, not a single beep on any of them. So this is a good sign. And we'll do another one. So this is a good ESC, and I know this is a good ESC because it's working. So that is 
how you know the difference between them. Now, if you accidentally touch the two drains together, for example here, if we touch two drains together, they will beep. And if you touch the two sources together, they will beep because they're connected together. So the sources are connected together and the drains are connected together. And it's the gate, which is this guy, is what opens and closes between these two. So think of the gate as one line in between, and these guys just want to go at each other. And when the gate opens, uh, they, they just connect to each other. So over here we see that the gate is closed, which is everything is totally working. Perfect. And that's all there is to it. It's really that simple. It's not complicated at all. You just, you know, most of them, all of them, pretty much all of them are pretty much the same here. For example, here's something just completely different. However, this is not going to work super good because I do have conformal coding on this guy. So we're not going to be able to test it. This guy is, is good. Nothing is wrong with him. And um, I just need to get it to focus here. So they're all the same thing, really. So you'd have to get the number off of this MOSFET. All of them are in MOSFET. This is a 4 in 1 ESC. And as you can see, they have 4 pins, 4 pins. All of them work the same. Some might have more. Like, for example, this one here has 2 MOSFETs per phase. Some might have 3 MOSFETs per phase, which is wire. Some might have 1 MOSFET per wire. And it's just all the same thing, really. So the next step, if you want... So this is still a good ESC. This one here, it's still a good ESC. All we need to do is just buy a couple of MOSFETs, and these are dollar twenty uh, a piece. However, it's not—it's really expensive for me in shipping. Um, this would cost me like seven bucks in parts to replace it, but the shipping was for around forty dollars. So, for me, it's—I'd uh, rather go get another ESC. However, I'm still looking for a good supplier in Europe to get these kinds of things for cheap. However, I could not find these in Europe, so yeah, that sucks. And we will be doing a repair video soon on these. Um, if I have to purchase some, I will. And uh, we can go ahead and do it together. And, well, that's it, guys. I mean, that's going to include it for this video. It's, it's very simple. Uh, it's not complicated at all. Just get your multimeter. And um, you could easily figure it out. So this is going to conclude it for this video. This one uh, video about the MOSFETs. Later on, we're going to do more, such as the voltage regulators, the tantalum capacitors. And we're also going to be doing motors as well. And um, if it really helped you, I really hope it helped you guys out there. And um, I, I really, I really do hope it helped you guys out there. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And um, you know, if if you would like to be one of my awesome Patreon supporters, that'd be super awesome. You could help support the channel. Uh, it'll allow me to put more time into debugging stuff and doing these kinds of things. And well. That's it, guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.